Council Station System Edge of Light Space. January 31st, 3506. As Lanha stepped out of the craft that had carried her to freedom, she was met by an unexpected sight, that of the human ambassador and a small entourage of what looked like officers of human, Larishi, and Calarius. However, the most surprising to her was that the highest-ranked officer from what she could tell was a cat Valen of gray fur and unglossed eyes. Ambassador Laanha, it is a pleasure to have you on board my ship. Welcome to the Endeavor, the Katval officer said while bowing his head. I am Admiral Kiathifan of the Calarius Corps fleet. I must say when I was given my orders, I wasn't sure if the brass had lost their Kilula Lance, he said, stepping a bit forward. But your address in the council meeting and your declaration to the emperor had been as your grandfather did. The flame of independence and freedom has been lit anew. Lanha watched this unknown admiral for a moment, then let out a controlled and steady breath. As the heiress to the throne, I wish more than anyone to see our people prosper. But that oversized marsupial had to be an idiot just like his father. I will not see our people die for a war we should not have started. She placed a hand on the admiral's shoulder and bobbed her head. Moreover, I am sick of watching those morons grow fat through our hard work. We were there first, and now we will be the first to break our chains, and the chains of any other that wishes. She paused and looked to the Terrans, for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well said, Lanha, Rout said. A human admiral, whom Lanha recognized from somewhere, looked over with a wide grin. Bold yet appealing choice of words. There were a few more encouraging words. Admiral Kiathifan, the soldier that rescued me, said my mother was also rescued. I would like to go see her. The admiral looked over to Rout. The Terrans are the ones that completed that rescue. Perhaps Ambassador Rout knows where she is. Lanha looked at the humans. Surely it was a mistake. The human fleet couldn't have done it. They were still too small to breach the defense of Kalmi, let alone reach the palace. How much did humanity lose to free my mother? She asked, dreading the answer. One light cargo ship, said the human admiral. What my counterpart meant was that the extraction of your mother was handled by a special operation team, who also faked their deaths at the edge of the Kalmi system by intentionally detonating a reactor of a light cargo ship. Rout chimed in immediately. She is currently being transported back to Terran space and will be staying with one of our senators. However, she has declared you as the Katvalin leader for this war, so we can't take you to her yet, Kia Thifan said. That changes things, Lana said before turning to the Admiral. Can you send a message toward the Empire on all frequencies? Of course, and we have taken the liberty to set up a spot for a video message to be sent. Not just audio, the elderly Katvalin said with a glint of joy. But first, let's get into FTL towards the Calarius technocracy. The Council Defense Fleet is following the trail of the boarding pod, and I am under orders to make that trail disappear. In FTL jump to the Calarius border system, KTSS Endeavor Utility Room 3. Lanha was now dressed in a well-made battle dress uniform of her people's old military. She had been given time to change and freshen herself but the weight of the responsibility of her next actions would make or break the lines of her people. Most will listen to her message, and so would some of the other contracted races. But some wouldn't. Her people will be divided, and unlike the Galavruk and Kyoshian, that line will be blared as families will be divided. A tech behind the camera started the countdown. A green light came on as the count hit zero. My people! and all second and third citizens of the Kalmazar Empire, and all their contracted allies. I am former Ambassador Lanha, and I have an important message. Today, after 1,520 loops, I am declaring war on the Kalmazar Empire. This is a war for our independence, for our freedom, for our future. The reason for this war is that the current emperor has failed to see the dangers he has placed his sovereignty in. He has chosen to indirectly declare war on the Terran Union, a race that I concluded the Empire could not win against. This war would have our people bleed by the trillions, and our worlds and people suffer needlessly. I implore all those who wish freedom to take back the reins and come to my people's ancient and hollowed homeworld. To the glassed world of Katmaris, come and join this call to arms.
a call for justice, a call for freedom, a call for liberty, and the rightful pursuit of happiness. Let today be the sounding of the war horns, the crack of the thunderous war cry. Let none stand against this. War has come to the empire of opportunists, and let them break against those who will accept nothing less than freedom. The light on the camera switched back to yellow, and a new pit formed in Lana's stomach. Taran War Room, Earth, Soul System. January 31st, 3506. Commander-in-Chief of the Terran Union looked out at the assembled admirals, generals, and diplomats. He was now going to have to make a decision about how to go about these two wars. On one hand, the Katval people have a right to be free, and on the other, the Terran Union swore to help protect the Kyoshian Citizens' Republic. And yet he had to also consider defending the home front from yet-to-be-seen actors. Ladies and gentlemen, he said in a claiming tone, our union is at war. Our garrison forces at the KCR have reported the implantation of a plan called, he looked down at his notes, Fabian Void. He cocked his eyebrow at the name for a brief moment. The first to fourth QRF fleets are assisting them, and the likelihood of them needing more help is unlikely. And the Katvalans are going to be supplied by the Kalaruis technocracy. And the Larishi Star Conclave has deployed two of their fleets to take and form a foothold in the Kalmazar Empire. That takes the pressure off us, but we need to accept two things. He looked out to the whole of the room. One, we don't know if there are other nations that will attack us. And two, we don't know how or where the Kalmazar Empire will attack. We have three fleets in combat-ready status and an additional five good for defense but undersupplied and three more currently being built up. So where does that leave us? He asked, though no one answered. Fucked if someone jumps in if we commit everything. Or pirates decide they want to try their luck again. So here is the plan. Fleets four and five will go and reinforce the QRF fleets in the Kyoshane front. Fleets one and two will go and help the Katval on that front, and the rest are staying put for now. In the meantime, I'll start pushing for war status to the Union, see about getting those nitwits off their butts and finishing our fleets. He gave a few of them one last glance. Let's get this done. Dismissed. The Katval System. Kyoshian Citizens Republic. Galavrik, Kyoshian Front. February 1st, 3506, 1020. KCRS Nidrhian. High Princess Kyla. Grand Admiral of the First Fleet sat in her command station and wondered. In her musings, she questioned if her brother was right or if the whole war could have been avoided. She wondered if her people could have been spared the horrors of the final night. She wondered if her father ever did have the ability to surrender. Her thoughts and pondering were cut short as an intel officer nearly jumped out of her seat as an alert blew a monotone sound. Admiral, we have three groups of FTL arrival signatures coming in the system, 29 giga units away. Number of ships unknown, the startled officer said as they read off the information. Comms, Kyla called out. Nothing on schedule, ma'am. Switch to standby alert for all ships and send a tight beam to Gallimar, Kyla said, and she leaned back into her chair. This will be the opening battle of this war and will set the tone for this war. She had to win not just for herself, but also for her people. Comms, be ready to hail their flagship. Intel, I want numbers and ship types the second the exit FTL. Weapons, active everything but stay powered down on the main cannons. Engineering, power up the shields, Kyla ordered. Some of her officers were already at the tasks, but she wasn't about to second guess what they were doing. Comms, when ready, open a channel to all ships and the planetary defenses. Channel open, ma'am, Kyla took in a deep breath her mind racing, but right now she had to have a clear head. Sailors and soldiers of the Kyoshian Citizens Republic, in a few nano units, a cluster of unknown FTL signatures appeared on sensors. I have no doubt that these are fallen brethren, those who have failed to see the passing of time and hold stubbornly to a glorified version of our history. But we are the defenders of our new nation, one where everyone lives free, one where a person's course in life is determined by their will and drive for success. Through this change, my eyes have been opened. I see a bright, brilliant golden age, and I will fight for that age and for that future. So I ask, will you fight with me? Ma'am, all ships and ground stations are hailing back. Yes, we will, the comms informed her. Ma'am, UFCs are arriving, said the intel officer. Thank you both. Now report intel, what are we up against? 
Kyla said back. Three battle groups of 50 ships plus two transport fleets of 30 each. Profiles match with modified Galavrek Gallons and Kalmizar battle cruisers. The transport fleet is composed completely of Kalmizar assault transports. Ma'am? Comms? Hailing now, ma'am, the comms officer said. Channel open. Unidentified flotilla, this is Grand Admiral Kyla. You will deactivate your drives and declare your intention, Kyla said at a terminal by her seat. There was an uncomfortable moment before the terminal flickered to life, and the image of a middle-aged Galavrak admiral looked at Kyla. This is Admiral Jace. You and your fleet will surrender immediately. You are in possession of stolen territory and people. You will accept your place in the serfs of the Galavrak Imperium. Admiral Jace, I find your request unacceptable. But I will say this. Surrender, save the lives of you and your men. You will be treated fairly and provided for. I don't want to fight you, Kayla said back. Surrender. I outnumber your fleet by a factor of three to one, and that's not including the transport fleet, Admiral Jace said. Very well. I will keep this channel free for your surrender, Kyla said before terminating the hail. Nav, get us at max range, Kyla barked. Weapons power up everything. Fleet deploy all wings, comms. Tell the fleet to follow and prepare to engage. Yes, ma'am, responded the officers. She watched as the fleet began to move in formation, as fighters and bombers dusted off and took a position in the gaps between the massive ships. She was outnumbered. Her 50-strong fleet would have to knock out three each just to draw out this fight. But her ships are human ships modified to work with their anatomy. Ten carriers, four battle cruisers, five destroyers, and a quote buttload of frigates. She didn't have the numerical advantage, but she did have the quality advantage. Fleet, I want all fighters and bombers to attack their transport fleets as soon as they start moving. Relay to all wings. Weapons, open with the MACs and follow up with the shredder missiles. Comms, contact Kakval and tell the ground HQ that they may have company. She studied the TAC map. Now let's show them what KCRS Nidruhian can do. At 10 giga units, the ships groaned as the three MACs fired. The rest of her fleet was a second behind. Then the battle commenced. Now would be her hour. Now was the time of her rise. Deep space outside Kyoshian Citizens Republic, Galavrak Kyoshian Front, February 1st, 3506, 1035, TUSS Wake the Void. So that's their comms relay, right? Master Gunnery Sergeant Barker asked. Appears so, said Captain Holt. Not that it matters. We are here to make it a pain in the prince's ass. Great fire up the rail gun and let go said the master gunnery sergeant. Can't, the captain said back. Orders to knock out, but not destroy. So what do you think we should do, Marine? Well, according to Daniel, they don't know we are here, right? Barker asked. Yep, and we need as much intel that thing has without blowing it up? Barker continued. Yep, easy. Me and the boys go and breach through two airlocks. Just before we start our approach, you fire shredders at their antenna and exposed weapons. We breach, kill everyone inside, and download all their databases, said Barker. Their tone and energy completely offset the fact they want to launch ordnance and assault crafts at the same time and attack a station in deep space that may or may not be rigged to self-destruct, and breach two airlocks while possibly taking fire from unseen weapons platforms. And all the while, Captain Holt could only smile. He loved insane plans, and former Sergeant Major Barker was the craziest Marine he had ever met. Sounds perfect. I'll get things ready. You go get your men ready. If this all goes to plan, they will have the intel and complete their mission here. But Barker is leading the Marines, so odds are that a few things will go wrong. Deep Space Outside Kyoshian Citizens Republic. Galavrik, Kyoshian Front. February 1st, 3506, 1040. On board, the assault craft was cramped with 14 Marines ready to pounce. Barker looked around at her men and smiled. All of them were the nutcases that stuck around because, according to them, shit goes foobar for her in the best way. She didn't mind it. Sure, she got demoted, but her last mission was a clusterfuck, and she did her best to finish the mission and get her men out. No one was expecting a bunch of pirates to be good marksmen or to have heavy weapons. Just like how no one was ready for all four lieutenants and their captain to take anti-personnel rounds to the face within the first five minutes, or for their transport to be blown to kingdom come the second they got to their LZ, or that the pirates would deploy a comms jammer and a defense shield over their base. But she did it. 
She rallied the Marines, collapsed a tower, recovered the kidnapped civilians, and extracted everyone, even the dead. Head Up Intel believes that this comm station is relaying data for the ongoing battle in Kakval, said the co-pilot over the intercom. Confirmed, ETA, said Barker. One minute, shredders are about to impact, informed the pilot. Helmets on, get ready to space it. Alpha, Bravo, we have airlock one. Charlie, Delta, airlock two. Breach in five mics. Weapons free, but avoid collateral damage. Everyone got their helmets on and checked their weapons. Their void suit was sealed with a hiss and hum as the air in the cabin left an eerie silence. A few had to recheck their suits and lock down leaks. After the last checks were completed, Barker slammed her fist on the pilot door. Less than a second later, the magnetic locks of the assault craft were released and the two side doors opened, exposing the Marines to the vacuum of deep space. In the back of her mind, only one thought played out. I wonder if they have an automatic sealing system. The Katval system, Kyoshian Citizens Republic. Galavrik Kyoshian Front, February 1st, 3506, 1025. KCRS Nidrahian. The flagship rocked as another round from the enemy fleet hit the shields. Kyla held tight to her seat. Damage report, she yelled in the direction of engineering. Shields at 73% and holding, no breaches, but we can't take too many hits like that without diverting power to the array, the head responded. Increase power to the shield array by 15%, she commanded. Weapon shift PDS focus to intercept all missiles. We need time. Right away. Kyla was surprised by the counterattack of her brother's forces. Her ship alone had taken three hits and had its position shifted, but she had to buy time. It would take her allies about an hour to jump into the system, and she had to play this battle the best way she can. Ma'am, their transport fleet has broken off and is approaching Katkval, announced the intel officer. Our fighters and bombers will handle them, and my sister will handle any that make landfall, she said back. Our task right now, we need to keep their fleets up here. Her ship let out another groan as the main cannons fired again. She noted that one of the enemy ships blipped off the TAC map. Her fleet was doing a good job so far. She had only lost two ships to ten of the enemy. She watched as the fighters and bombers broke into formation and chased after the transports. At the departure, the fleet's formation maneuvered slightly closed together to allow for the overlapping of PDS. Ma'am, one of the enemy battle groups hasn't engaged, said Intel Officer Kyla snapped her attention back from the terminal to the TAC map, where indeed, one of the enemy battle groups had stayed still. Order the Vimavark and Foriatmar to break formation and see if they can line up shots. If the enemy wants to stay still, then they can take some max to the face. Ma'am, said the comms officer. Everyone report, Kiali yelled out as the ship took another hit. We have lost 6% of our force, and the wings are reporting a 5% loss in strength. Enemy transport fleets have lost 16% of their original force. Enemy battle groups have lost 12% of their total power, the fleet officer said back after getting to his feet again. Shield at 66%, ma'am, yelled the head of engineering. Ground HQ has requested we maneuver to point 012 so they can provide long-range fire support, ma'am, a comms officer said. Three Kila units until the main cannons are recharged. Missiles at 80% capacity. The weapons officer shouted while still typing away at his terminal. Ma'am, the enemy third battle group is moving out of weapons range of the Weimar Vark and Foriatmar, a lieutenant commander said as they slid into the seat of a now concussed commander. Tell the Weimar Vark and Foriatmar to fall back into formation, Kiali said, turning her attention back to the TAC map. Something didn't seat right about the last battle group. Intel, rescan the third battle group and see if they are actively transmitting anything. As soon as the word left her mandibles, the ship rocked again. Move the fleet to point 012 slowly. We will bait the enemy while buying time for our attack crafts. Something about that last fleet felt off. Comms, inform our reinforcement that they should arrive at point 015 and tell them it's Gullivar's word. Intel, inform me the second any of their fleets move at all. Her ship rocked again. Her adversaries didn't like giving her time to breathe, it seemed. Shields at 52%, ma'am. Ma'am, we have left weapons range, said the weapons officer. Enemy second battle group has broken off and is moving into weapons range of point 015, the LC at the Intel station said. Their third battle group is actively transmitting and receiving, ma'am. 
Comms. Data burst new transmission frequency 0.13B NAV. Bring us into the weapons range of their first battle group. Intel. Start launching random arrival vectors on current frequency and use file F12 for confirmation. Kiali ordered. Weapons fire free. I want that battle group shredded now. Those fools thought they could slip their interception of her communications past her. But she had spent five Earth years on Mars, in the Terran Union's military academy in Tyr. Their trick will not beat her. Maybe if she was one of her younger sisters, but not her. Comms, over the tight beam to Gallimar. Comms tapped, she said. February 1st, 3506-1055. KCRS, Nidrion rocked again at the impact of the enemy fire. It was followed by a short hum. Shields are down, ma'am, the head of engineering yelled out. The battle was still in her favor. Her fleet had knocked out or destroyed nearly 30 of the enemy for the price of seven, a feat that had been achieved thanks to her intel officers noting the odd movements of the enemy battle groups and the fact that her enemy seemed to believe that she hadn't discovered their tricks. Had this war started 12 years ago that maybe they had a chance, but her human classmates in the academy had seen to training her thoroughly. Nav, move us deeper into our formation. Comms, have the Kalmsra fill our position. Engineering, ETA on shields reboot, she ordered. Fifteen kilo units, ma'am, the head of engineering responded. We need over half of our fleet still combat capable for the next 45 kilo units. Comms, open channel to all active ships and wings, she called out. Open, yelled the comms officer. Fear not the enemy, for he is scared. Do not show him mercy, for he will show you none. Do not embrace them, for their embrace is that of daggers. Kiali took a deep breath and ignited a force in her a primal power her kind had forgotten. Hate, hate our fallen kinsmen. Hate them for the lives they seek to take. Hate them for the future they seek to steal. Hate them for the fallen they insult. Give them no quarter. Give them no respite. Give them no time. They are our enemy, and until they are but smoldering wrecks falling into this star, show them the spite of the free. She reached and terminated the channel from her terminal. Ma'am, our ships, the LC started. The ships we had believed destroyed. They are firing everything they have left, Kiali said without looking at the woman. Yes, Admiral. Ask me what is happening after the battle, Kiali said as she studied the TAC map. Ma'am, Gallimar just transmitted, a comms ensign started. Enemy comms relay found. ETA for reinforcement accelerated. Intelligence suggests enemy reinforcement imminent. Kiali started to scream internally. She hated it when her classmate would pull in more forces, and in real life, she knew all too well what that meant for her fleet. She had to switch plans and roll the dice, a gamble. Fleet, recall all wings and order a spearhead formation. Comms, tell Ground HQ to target enemy transport fleet. Kiali took a shuddering breath. Weapons, she nearly yelled. Ready the AMC, authorization J-02A. The bridge seemed to fall silent, and the weapons officer, for the first time since the start of this battle, looked away from his terminal. He watched her for longer than what would be considered appropriate or respectful. Yes, Grand Admiral. The Nidrahian shook as the triple main guns shifted in their mounts. Their standard orientation changed as each broke and took a point in a newly forming barrel. The entirely new weapon shifted back, connecting its firing chamber with the ship's secondary reactor. Nidrahian was one of four battlecruisers she had. It was the only Shinigami-class battlecruiser and was the only reason she chose it as her flagship. It is the only ship humans sometimes call a dreadnought, with its ability to change its standard triple-spinal MACs for a single-fire antimatter cannon to the bane of many admirals. Fleet is in formation, ma'am, the fleet leader informed her. AMC ready, it needs two kilo units to fire, said the weapons officer. Intel, find the enemy flagship and mark it for weapons, Kiali said. Weapons, target their flagship's bridge. She took a breath. We need to decapitate their forces. Comms, transmit a request for surrender to any of their ships that survive. Ma'am, we have IFF from inbound FTL. The Terran's first and second QRF fleets are jumping in, the LC at the Intel said. Tell them to quickly jump behind our position. Kiali said quickly as she watched the countdown creep lower. We can't have them in the strike zone and tell any other reinforcement to jump to point 010. 
Her tack map let off a tone as her allies dropped back into real space before jumping again. They returned just behind her formation. Then she turned her attention back to the enemy. They grouped back up and turned their forces, all of them, back to her. Comms, order all fleets to join our formation and fire free. Weapons, time until fire, Kiali ordered. One kilo unit, ma'am, the weapons officer. But we will need a clear line. Comms, have the Kalmsra move out of our line in two kilo units, Kiali ordered. Kiali watched as the charge-up timer reached zero, and her mind wandered to a phrase a friend had said to her when they played a tactical war game together. At the time, they had said it with a hint of humor, though she doubted they would do so now. That one line of speech had sent her down a rabbit hole of Earth weapons history, a history that she never found the end of. In front of her eyes, the Kalmsra began to rise up and away from her ship's central line. And still, her mind lingered lingered on the phrase, an odd phrase, one that her friend had spoken with humor as he deployed weapons of mass destruction on her base, weapons that had technically won him the ground war, weapons that were given to humans by the very man that had uttered the phrase so long ago. Time seemed to slow as the weapons officer initiated the firing sequence, and still that phrase, one whose origin came from the tales of a culture on the near other side of Earth to him, yet uttered in both awe and horror by that man. She watched as the small piece of antimatter was accelerated to about a fifth of the speed of light at her enemy. Her legs ached, her eyes grew sore, and hearts sped up their pounding. And she finally could not hold on to the thought anymore, for at this moment she had become it. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, she said to the room as the energy burst at the point of impact blinding their sensors and cameras. And in the dark, she let loose a single teardrop.